Welcome to the Product Design Show, I'm Vince Penman. Designing products can be as much about framing a problem as it is about assembling components. In today's episode, we'll look at top-down and bottom-up design, the two most common ways that engineers approach product concept design. I'm Allison Topperwine. What do we mean when we say top-down and bottom-up design? How are they different? Can they work together? Top-down design is characterized by extensive research and planning leading into the development of a product. Before a single piece of geometry is sketched, a complete understanding of the project is outlined. This type of thinking allows multiple teams of designers to work cohesively on a single product. Bottom-up design takes an opposite approach. Goals for a product are still outlined, but the assembly of a complex product is done on a system-by-system -system and often iterative basis. Now you might be asking yourself, why would anyone choose the bottom-up design approach? Top-down design gives you guidelines so that you're not wasting time. But those constraints can sometimes be the biggest stumbling block on the way to making meaningful products. The bottom-up design approach has one powerful attribute its flexibility in adapting the design to new information from a feedback loop. And designers know that flexibility can be crucial in delivering a great product. In previous episodes, we've looked at designs that have used both approaches. When we spoke with JR Automation, they described their design approach as top-down, and that makes sense. When you're creating large-scale assembly systems, you have to take a larger view of your design challenges. Integrating numerous stations and components would be impossible if you couldn't step back and plan the system as a whole. When creating the coolant reservoir assembly system, the top-down approach allowed designers at JR Automation to develop a central robotic arm that would serve as the hub for many of the interactions in the system. While each substation was doing its job, the robotic arm was in constant motion, picking and placing components to ensure the assembly line was running at maximum efficiency. When it comes to bottom-up design, the Buchanan bird brains who competed in the Rebound Rumble held by the first robotics competition provide us with a great example. Because of the experimental nature of the first robotics competition, a bottom-up design approach made the most sense for the bird brains. Testing components and adjusting subsystems was key to a successful design. In the bird brains case, this led them to discover that placing electronic component boards on each side of the robot had some benefits. In fact, by splitting the component boards, the team was able to free up the guide wires that controlled the robot's shooting motion, making it more effective at sinking buckets. Choosing the right approach to a design problem is key to creating a successful product, but not all projects fit neatly into either a top-down or a bottom-up mold. To choose the right approach for your project, examine what your team is trying to achieve. If it's experimental, maybe you should choose bottom-up, if it's a space shuttle, you should probably choose top-down. But there's also room for a blended approach. And sometimes the most successful designs choose this direction, starting with a top-down approach and then iterating towards an optimal solution. Thanks to PTC for sponsoring this episode. To learn more about concept design best practices and why it's crucial in effectively developing products, visit ptc.com slash solutions slash concept design. And thanks for watching this episode of the Product Design Show. Please give it a like on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, or give us a rating on iTunes.